Hey, good morning. This is April the 10th, 2024. I'm Pastor Harvey Beck at Lester Memorial Methodist Church. We're glad you're joining us for our Wednesday devotion. This past Sunday, uh, Pastor Joe Hastings, he preached at our church. We are celebrating 100 years of our sanctuary. Some of you that go to our church know that. We kind of have emphasis every Sunday, and and then we'll finalize all that on April the 28th. And uh, we'll have a big meal together and everything to celebrate uh, our sanctuary, which was built 100 years ago. But we're looking at all the history. And Brother Lester was his name, and so they named the the church after him, Lester Memorial. And um, anyway, Joe preached from Joshua, the fourth chapter. And anytime I hear this passage, read it or hear it, I've preached from it before. I'm going to share with you a couple of things I was thinking while he was preaching it. Great sermon that we do remember the past. History is important, but we also have to go on. And I'll do the devotion in a similar way. But uh, let me just read to you the text. Some of you heard it Sunday, but here it is again. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, so they're getting ready to go to the promised land, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take 12 stones. So 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men as he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder. So I figure it must have been a pretty big boulder. I'm about to show you a picture of a stone that I used in a sermon one time when I preached from this text. But anyway, they picked him up. according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you. So sometimes these stones, these memorials, are a sign to us to remember something. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord when it crossed And when it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. Their stones are there to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. So very important, significant. Teach them to your children. So the Israelites did as Joshua commanded them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of Israel, as the Lord had told Joshua, and they carried them over with them to their camp where they put them down. Now, while Joe was preaching, I did remember that I had preached from this, and uh, I want to show you a picture of a stone. Now, that is in the flower bed at our home. I've had it at several homes, and when we came to uh, came here to Aniana, I put that in the flower bed. It's right by the corner of our driveway, so I see it every day. I don't always think about it, but <clears throat> there are times I ponder over it, a stone of remembrance. So sometimes it's important to remember things. So interestingly, one of the One time when I preached this at a church I was at, I carried the stone, and I put it where people could see it, and I told them I got this stone from off the property where my mom and dad live down in Ivory. And uh, so I preached the sermon, and uh, afterwards, I had a guy come up. Hey, he was a horticulturist. He did gardens and different things, and so he was really interested in that stone. He said, could I have that stone? And I said, well, I— I've kind of used it when I preach on that, and I'd like to keep it because it came from my mom and my dad. Well, I'll pay you for it. He was going to pay me for the stone. And I I said, well, you know, I I really, I I just want to keep it. Well, okay. He was real, real disappointed, but I didn't want to sell it. I wanted to keep it. And I've still got it, and I'm going to keep it as long as I can. So I have it. You saw the picture, and so I kept it. So it's a stone of remembrance for me because when I see it, I think of the Joshua passage right there in my yard. There's another stone that is there, and uh, here's the picture of it. It's a triangle-shaped rock. I don't know how well you can see it. The glare is off of it. But it's um, not that big, but significant enough that it, it took a little bit to pick it up. Now, why is that important? It's only important to me because I got that stone up at Mentone. Mentone, Alabama, Lana and I were staying in a cabin at Mentone on our 40th anniversary. 
And so through the years, I have collected stones and rocks from each place we've lived. Being a pastor, we've moved around to different parsonages. Sometimes the kids and I in Atlanta would go camping or something. I'd get a stone. Well, I have a box, a big box full of just small rocks. Uh, and I put a note inside where they came from. Uh, Audra and Dave and I were hiking at so-and-so, Little River Canyon, and we kept it on this date. So I'd put the date. All these are are stones of remembrance because it's sometimes important to remember those things. So they're down in my basement. They don't really mean anything to anybody, but um, they'll mean something to my daughter, Audra, at some point, and I'll probably hand them on down to her if she wants them. But they're stones of remembrance. Um, and again, I don't know if you notice. Let me show you. It's it's broken off on one end. You can see a small crack right here. Well, it cracked all the way off. Well, we'd had it for several years, and I, our grandson favor, he was probably four years old. He's seven now. He flipped it over one time, and it broke the corner off. And I was like, oh. And he realized I was, and I said, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's okay. He didn't know it had any great, you know, that it was our 40-year anniversary. I said, we'll glue it back together. I had some cement that's made to, for rock. And so I put some of that uh, cement in there and and put it back together. And so, but it's got the crack. You can see the line in it. But isn't that kind of like life? And so I'll always remember him flipping that over. And again, those are just stones of remembrance. I have this stone. It was given to me by a lady here in our church. I preached a sermon called Let Go and Let God. And uh, she was moved by the word of God and by the sermon. And so she uh, had found this stone, and it's the title of the sermon, Let Go and Let God. My grandmother, Granny Powell, she had a magnet that was on her refrigerator that always said that, let go and let God. So I will always keep this stone in my office as a reminder to let go and to let God. So all those are just stones of remembrance. And... Uh, while we remember and while we learn from the past, which we should, in fact, a lot of times the problem is we don't learn from history, but there are certain things that God in the Bible has said, pass this down from generation to generation. Well, the word of God is eternal, so we must pass it down uh, to generation to generation. We must continue to teach the principles. This is a stone of remembrance, but it's also eternal, so therefore it points to the future. And Joe tied in different things about that, but the point is, yes, we have to go on. Well, I'm going to end with a scripture from Philippians, and it says this, Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on. So I don't know where you're at right now in your walk and your journey, but while we do remember from the past, there are stones that remind us of things. There's also that within us that the Holy Spirit says you got to press on. So you may be dealing with some stuff that maybe today you need to hear the words press on. But I press on to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, those things that hold me down. Not that we didn't, we do need stones of remembrance. But I forgetting what is behind and I'm straining toward what is ahead. I press on, there's that statement again, toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So while we remember stones of remembrance of things we should remember, yet there is that Holy Spirit within us that says we've got to press on. So as we're celebrating 100 years of celebration, guess what? We've got to press on. And so you too may be at a place where stones of remembrance are good. They can be healthy for us, but we've got to press on. I hope you'll press on. Let go and let God remember the stones of remembrance. Bless you. Amen.